right now. She's stabbing me with her modified scale on the tip of her tail. That's you. Ooh, that's used. So if a predator ends up grabbing that tail, she can distract that animal easily by stabbing it with that modified scale. Well, while she's on that side, I'll keep my eye on her and gently move these enclosures out. She's doing her thing. I'm keeping my eyes on her at all times. There we go. Nice and easy. So these green mambas are roughly about a year old. Good size, about the same size that Kobe Dinkelman, my black mamba, came in as. And just look how vibrant the colors are on the eastern green mambas. They are the most solid green of the green mambas. Seventy-six. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. Seventy-nine. Switch arms. Oh, oh yeah. Every babe in this county is gonna want to know my scientific name. Ooh. Oh, I didn't see you there. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to my beautiful wildlife. I'm just getting a little jacked right now because I, I want to get a little pumped before we get into the madness. You know what's about to happen today? We're about to flip snakes. Did you not read the title? Pay attention. Come on. So obviously you aren't sure what's about to happen. You haven't read the title. So today's going to be really crazy. So we have our new green mambas from Africa, straight out of Africa from Dingo Dinkleman. Thank you so much. He's the best out there. If you guys haven't watched Dingo Dinkleman's channel, go check him out. Badass mother lover from the land of Africa, catching snakes, dealing with crocodiles, taking him and his family into the bush looking for lions. Come on, kids. Let's go. <laughs> like, the coolest life you can live. So thank you, thank you so much for these beautiful green mambas. You guys saw the video of us unboxing them, now it's time to set them up. We don't have that many vision cages available. Honestly, like no good sized vision cages available, just a little small ones. So what we ended up doing is we got a new vision cage. Really big one, got it used. This beautiful beast of a cage. And this is not gonna be for the green mambas because it's not an arboreal setup, but look how much surface area, how much ground space there is. So what we're gonna do is take our big, beautiful West African female cobra. We're gonna stick her inside this enclosure so she has more space than she does now. And then we're gonna take King Tut, our Egyptian cobra. We're gonna take him out of a smaller cage and put him into the forest cobra's old cage so he gets an upgrade. And then his cage is an arboreal setup, which is gonna be where the green mambas are gonna be living. So we're flipping around. Hey, what are you doing in there? I just cleaned that. I just cleaned that. Come on now. Come on. I cleaned you too. Why are you so dirty? I cleaned this dog and she gets dirty right away. Silly girl. So we got all of our new mulch right here. Cypress snow float. And we got our insulation, which is very important. This is a black strip that glues onto one side. And basically you put on the glass, you close the glass, and now that little tiny gap is no longer there. The snakes cannot get out of that. But just to make sure, just to double check and make sure that they can't get out, we're using this insulation just like we did for Kobe, our black mamba. You don't want to make any mistakes with some of the deadliest snakes on the planet. And that's why we take this so seriously. So let's get on into the snake house, into the, <clears throat> the serpentarium. And uh, Barry, you're going to have to stay out here and keep watch, okay? You just bark and howl if you see any neighbors around here. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I, I love you. Peace and prosper. If you live around me, know that I just got nothing but love for all you. Even if you don't like me, hey, I got love for you. All right, beautiful people, we're good to go. We got our box ready for the forest cobra because we're gonna have to start taking the snakes out, switching them around, getting the enclosures ready. Check this out, we've got Allison the Black Mamba watching very carefully over her new roommates, the Green Mambas, and everyone seems to be doing good. Allison's just been hanging out for the past, I don't know, the whole day, I guess, just circling around these Green Mambas, checking them out, checking out their pheromones and whatnot, but it seems like they're pretty happy, pretty happy snakes. The Green Mambas, it's time for them to get a new setup, time for them to get the actual setup they're gonna be living in. So let's, uh, let's start getting into it. We need to take this Force Cobra out, get into this box, secure it, Get this enclosure cleaned and ready for King Tut, the Egyptian cobra, who's right here. There he is looking, he's so beautiful. He's a beast of a snake. He could potentially get like 10 feet long, maybe even a little bit more, and he's gonna need a bigger setup. So the forest cobra, being Africa's longest true cobra, and then the second longest cobra in Africa is the Egyptian cobra. Two heavy hitters, two beautiful snakes, two very defensive athletic snakes. So let's be very careful, because the African snakes, their venom is a deadly cocktail of venoms, Whereas our Asianic cobras, like uh, the monocoque cobra over here, are mostly a neurotoxic snake. <laughs> Pan-African venom, you don't want to mess with. Eat you away, cause gangrene, nasty, nasty stuff. So let's make sure we're nice and safe when we do this. Let me get the keys ready. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is get this beautiful cobra out. 
So she's already paying attention to me. She's right there behind that hide. So what we're gonna do is just move the hide out, make it easier. There we go. Look at her, she is such a beautiful snake. So she's gonna get a huge upgrade. She's gonna have so much more space to work with, which is super important because the West African Forest Cobra, being the longest true cobra in Africa, or longest true cobra on the planet, because the king cobra is actually not a true cobra, this snake deserves a lot of space. They could get real large. And also, we're eventually gonna wanna get a mate for this beautiful girl, so we're gonna want her to have lots of space for her roommate. Let's see, Ooh, she's reversing on me, let her do her thing. She actually looks a little opaque, so I think she's getting ready to shed. So that just makes it a little bit sketchy with handling, but we'll get it done. There we go, we got the coil. Just gonna hold on to that tail, she's just stabbing me. Right now, she's stabbing me with her modified scale on the tip of her tail. That's you, Ooh, that's you, so if a predator ends up grabbing that tail, she can distract that animal easily by stabbing it with that modified scale. She is very upset. I can hear her hissing. You see, she just got a little bit of spicy meatball on my shirt just now. Mamma Mia, look, she's big, she's all over the place, and she's going through sheds, so we want to make sure she's good to go. Mamma Mia, please, don't make this so difficult. Come on, come on, don't, don't, don't cause a fuss. Into the box, there we go. Get your tail in there. There we go. And nothing but a, just a little raw, ah, raw eh, ramen noodles on my shirt. Good thing my sense of smell is only half there because I had that cold. Anyway, so uh, let's see what we got going on. The mulch, a little bit old, a little disgusting. Got bacteria from the previous snake, the forest cobra. So we're gonna clean out most of this mulch or let's just clean it all out. Get it nice and sprayed down, get the glass clean. We're gonna switch out all the labels to the new cages so everything's proper with identification because here in the state of Florida, when you have a venomous snake license, you must label danger venomous reptile. You must put the English name, you must put the scientific name, the taxonomy, so we know exactly what species we're looking at. Specifically for the Florida Fish and Wildlife because they manage all this stuff. They look through everything, they look at my inventory, they wanna know exactly what I'm working with for safety, so. It's all good to go, it's all perfection now, and we're about to get deep into it. Oh, okay. We're gonna start taking out all this mulch, because this snake's about to get a whole new setup. That Egyptian cobra's gonna get a whole bunch of more space. Everyone's gonna get an upgrade, it's a good day. Everyone's getting switched up to bigger rooms. I'll see you guys in a split. All right guys, we're good to go. The cage is nice and clean. Still have to put the water bowl and the hide into this enclosure, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's just get this Egyptian cobra out. King Tut, as you know, is probably the most cantankerous snake to deal with in the snake house. Hopefully he's not too bad today. What's up, dude? You wanna make this easy? There we go, nice and easy. I already got pooped on once today. We don't need to do it several times. All right, cage is closed, we're good. Now what I need to do is get this water bowl cleaned out, give him some fresh water. We're gonna put that in his enclosure and he's gonna get his cork bark hide. And then we're gonna take this enclosure, prepare for the green mamas. We're gonna take this enclosure, put it on the bottom. We're gonna take the gaboons bump up, up, and then we put the green mamas on top of that so you can see them better for display. And then over here, we're gonna take this enclosure for the forest cobra, and we're gonna put it on top of the yellow anacondas, probably put the heel monsters on top of that, and then stick the Mexican West Coast rattlesnake somewhere else. Maybe my bedroom. No, just kidding, we're not doing that. Everything snake stays in the snake house. All right, so uh, let's get this going. We're gonna clean out this enclosure in a second. Let me just get the water bowl and the hide put in there. All right, so the hide's in there. We're gonna go, we're gonna get that water bowl put in, and then we're gonna get to this enclosure. I'll see you guys in a lickety split. All right, guys, we got the water bowl, we got the hide, we're good to go, and we are secure. So we're gonna move on. This enclosure right here will be for the green mambas. So you know what? Let's just get to stacking these up the right way. We're gonna switch them up, and we'll be right back. Rah! I can't use my powers that much. <sighs> I need some electrolytes. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is clean the glass. It's a bit dirty, get it nice and clean. We're gonna get all that mulch out, make it look nice, get some fresh mulch, and then we're gonna get those green mambas set up in here, get some sticks, because they're a boreal species. They like to climb it. Hello? Yes? Did you have something to say? Another African species, the Gaboon Vipers, they have the world's longest fangs of any venomous reptile. And in the back of that enclosure, you'll see the Rhino Viper, which is in the same family as them. So they're all found in Africa. And these two species are found in the same environment, which overlaps, and they create hybrids in the wild, which will create Childish Gambino, the Gabino. Beautiful Viper. 
and he's just so, so beautiful. But today is not about him. It's about the mambas and the cobras. Yeah! All right, guys, we're gonna get into it. Get all this dirty mulch out. It is just dusty. I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. See this? That's a crappy situation. Let's get rid of it. So I'll see you guys in a split. Let me get all this mulch out. We got our label right here. We're good to go. We're just gonna stick that right there because here in Florida it is required not just to have the English name, but the scientific name so you know exactly what species you're working with. All right guys, so we got our glass nice and clean. We're gonna stick this right back in the track. There we go. Okay, so we've got really good sticks right here. One's actually a bit of a mine. Look at that, it bends. Isn't that cool? We're gonna stick that in there. I'm actually gonna bend this around like this right here. Make it a nice arboreal habitat. Let's see. You know, we're not going too crazy with this. It's just a simple setup with a, oh boy. All right, Boy Scouts, girls, boys, and buzzards. We've got that stick nice and secure. We're gonna get this other stick and put it just like that. I think it looks, Lee needs a little bit more. Wait a second. I got something. I got something. All right, so I got a little bit of greenery to put inside the enclosure. Real simple. Just went out and got some sticks, you know? Just uh, real, real easy, real easy. The mambas will, will definitely enjoy this. All right, so let's get this right in there. That'll make the mambas feel nice and comfy. They can hide back there. They can hide among the leaves. They can even hide up on the lip waiting for me to open up the enclosure. So like, Anyways, that's not going to happen. We know it. Always check our lips anything in it ah, ah, ah. just kidding nothing's in there yet so let's move on let's go get our water bowl i think what i'll do is give them the forest cobra's old water bowl and upgrade the forest cobra since that's a bigger snake that might need to soak its whole body and we're gonna stick that water bowl right there next to the house so now they have a home they have a deck and they have an above ground swimming pool what can i say i get the best to my snakes comment below what do you do for your snakes all right guys so now the last thing i gotta do is actually put the insulation on the glass to make sure there's no tiny minuscule little gaps nothing nothing no risk when it comes to dealing with deadly venomous snakes especially non-native to florida so what we have is our insulation stripping right here and this stuff is great so if you're a venomous keeper, if you're a non-venomous keeper, no matter what you're keeping, if it's just snakes in general and they're small, you definitely want to invest in stuff like this because this stuff is extremely cheap. Just measure it out to exactly what you need. So we're going to cut it right there and I'll use my, there we go, my fingers to make it nice and easy. And then we're just going to gently strip it. Put that strip right along that glass and now I can sleep easy at night knowing that all my snakes are as secure as they can possibly be. And you see that little gap? The space this snake would have to escape would be in between this plastic and this metal. That is a very small, minuscule little gap. And some would say, ah, leave it. No, we're not gonna leave it. We're gonna go every little measure we need to take. So I'll take a little piece of this foam and I'll stick it right there where it belongs. There we go. And now we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to sweat or anything like that. We're good to go. And we're gonna look at it, give it a nice inspection before we stick any mambas in there. The glass is nice and tight to the sides. Good to go. We got our lock. We're ready. Let's put these green mambas in their temporary setup. Look, that's simple. You just got some sticks, some shrubbery, cypress, a hide, water bowl, the simple things in life you need to make animals happy. Food, water, shelter. So we're gonna move on. Let me just get this glass open. So. Let's go get these green mambas. As you guys know, Allison's been guarding them all day. Look at her. She's such a sweet girl. She's all wrapped up around these mambas, using their, their boxes as a place to hide behind. Look how beautiful the green mamba is in contrast to the black mamba. The green mamba, not the deadliest of the mamba family, but they make up for beauty. They're just gorgeous, vibrant green snakes. And then the black mamba, of course, is the second longest venomous snake on the planet, getting up to 14 feet long. Black mambas named the black mamba because of the black interior of their mouth that they display when they're threatened. And that green mamba got that name for obvious reasons. So let's get ready to actually open up this enclosure and safely get around Alice and the black mamba. Because remember, she's 10 feet long and she's just hanging out right there with those greens. And we have to get those greens out right now. So. Let me get my snake hook. So hopefully she just gets a little spooked and she backs up. I'll give her a little tickle. Maybe she'll actually, she'll head over to her box. Wanna go? What are you doing? All right, I'm just gonna redirect her to her box then. Come here. There we 
go. Just going nice and smooth with her. We don't want to upset her. Facing her towards her box over there. So she can go back inside and hide. No, sweetie. Go that way. Come on, go that way. Give her a little tail tickle, get her to go. Go ahead. All right, well, while she's on that side, I'll keep my eye on her and gently move these enclosures out. She's doing her thing. I'm keeping my eyes on her at all times. There we go. Nice and easy. All right, let me put this one over here. Glasses nice and tight to the sides. Let's get that lock on the cage. Nice and secure. I'm sorry, Allison, I know your friends are gone. Don't worry, eventually Kobe, the black mamba, will be big enough to live with you. If you guys can see, Kobe's right here. He's my male black mamba, and eventually, in a couple years, he'll be ready for that big female. And then we'll be breeding black mambas and green mambas in a couple years. Awesome stuff. All the babies that we'll produce won't be going to private keepers. We're strictly doing this for educational reasons, for conservation purposes. So these babies will be relocated to another wildlife park for display or be donated for a venom lab for venom research and anti-venom. So really good stuff. Let's get these green mambas home. All right, so right here, this, let's see, this is the male. He's slightly bigger. Oh my goodness, I can't get over these guys. So these green mambas are roughly about a year old. Good size, about the same size that Kobe Dinkleman, my black mamba, came in as. And just look how vibrant the colors are on the eastern green mambas. They are the most solid green of the green mambas. All right, guys, we're going to gently put this green mamba into the enclosure. Nice and simple here. Get a quick shot, because I know last time the quality of the footage wasn't too good. So let's get a nice shot of how beautiful that face is. Look how beautiful the green mambas are. And they are a bit more placid. Not placid to the point where I'm going to let this thing nearly touch my fingers, but placid to the point where they're not as bad a black mamba. All right, slide right down that hook. Come on. Look at this. Just look at that face real quick. That is such a pretty snake. Bright, bright, vibrant green. As they get older, they will turn more and more green. All right, let's see if he realizes that he's got a good place to go live. Oh yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Nice and easy. So let's get this other one in real quick, just because we're going to leave that glass open like that. We're good to go. And then boom, we have our gorgeous female green mamba. Look at her, she is just stunning. And as time goes on, her pattern will be more and more vibrant, one solid green color. She just needs to shed a couple times and she'll be good to go. I'm so happy with these snakes. Thank you so much, Dingo Dinkleman. You are a man, you are such the man. Like, I can't believe you. What a great housewarming gift. I have one buddy bring me a bunch of giant Paku from the Amazon. I have another buddy give me green mambas. I have the best friends on the planet. All right, so let's get this glass in. What I'm gonna do is actually slide it in so it's right over that foam. There we go. Make sure that's in there nice and good. All right, now we're gonna get a lock on this. So let me get the lock, I'll be right back. People were good to go. The enclosure is nice and set up. Lots of space for the snake to stretch because this is the longest true cobra on the planet, being in the Naya family. Whereas a king cobra would be an Ophiophagus, not a true cobra member. But look at this. We've got a nice big water bowl for the snake to soak. Lots of space for the snake to stretch. Big old rat for him to eat. And we got a nice hide from the old enclosure. So let's just let's get the snake back. Let's go. All right. So what we're gonna do is just take this forest cobra out of the box. Should just be chilling. Hey. Now remember, this snake is going through shed, so it's very opaque. It's very upset. What's up? Ooh, look at that. They hook beautifully. But you see that twitching motion? She is very irritated. So let's just get this little chunky monkey out. There we go. Ooh, maybe you don't need a rat. You can look pretty thick. All right, so let's get the snake right into the enclosure. Beautiful. All this space to roam and grow and grow. That's a happy snake. Let's get the... What are you doing? I'm going on the lip. And you see how opaque the belly looks right now, nice and blue? That's another way to tell a snake's going to shed if you can't tell by looking at its eye. Oh, let's go back up for a second. Let me close this up. Nice and closed. Okay, let's get a walk on that. 
nice and secure. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for joining me on my wildlife. Thank you again, Dingo Dinkleman, for this beautiful pair of green mambas. Look, they're settling in nice. They're moving around the branches. Look at that one right there. They are just so beautiful. I can't thank you enough, Dingo. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, don't forget to get your Chandler's Wildlife merch because if you're going to go in the gym and get Jack, you might as well be monitored by a monitor lizard like Jack. The Bell Space Lace Bunker. Ooh, it doesn't come with snake musk all over it, but it does come clean. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams. Stay passionate, and stick to what you love. I'll see you on the next one. Wait one second, boys and girls. Don't put down that cell phone right now. Stay on that toilet and finish popping a squat so you can listen to this message. Crockfest 2021 Tampa Zoo here in Tampa, Florida. You better be there because this is the first time I'm doing a meet and greet in two years at the Crockfest Conservation Group event. Every ticket you buy to enter this event, all the money will go towards crocodile conservation. Specifically for this event, we're targeting the critically endangered Indian Gario. Ooh! So if you guys ever wanted to become conservationists yourself, come to the Tampa Zoo, buy yourself a ticket. All the proceeds will go towards this beautiful species, the Gario, and you will get free drinks, free food, and there'll be an auction. All the things auctioned up will go towards Indian Gario conservation. So, become a conservationist yourself, come meet me at the Tampa Zoo, and let's have a good weekend. Janu June, no, wait, what, what's the date? June 26th. June 26th, Saturday at the Tampa Zoo. Bring your Chandler's Wildlife t-shirts, bring your tenacity, and let's have a good time. I'll see you there. Links below! Snappy snap. Every babe in this county is going to want to know my scientific name. Ooh.